Let's travel way back to 2010, when Angry Birds as a franchise really began to take off. Countless casuals, fans, and gamers fell in love with the mobile phenomenon, firing circular flightless birds at complex structures housing green pigs. Unorthodox? Yes, but a brilliant and successful idea. These early successes turned out to be the framework for a once-storied franchise, and it was only natural and inevitable that a playable, physical copy of the game's formula would come. Fans have been clamoring for that very idea since Angry Birds' early successes. Enter Mattel. Rovio partnered with Mattel and worked with their gaming department to develop a series of family-friendly games that, in a sense, would mimic the Angry Birds core mechanics. After many months of development, at the 2011 CES Electronics Convention and later the Toy Fair, Mattel unveiled their near-complete test model of a game called Knock on Wood. The game featured plastic counterparts of many key elements to help recreate levels from the game. Components like birds, pigs, blocks, and a slingshot. The blocks range from large girders to small girders, and cubes to triangular bits. Also, there were some cards decorated with level setups, birds, and points, which transitions right into how these games work. Here's a quick info guide on how to play Angry Birds Mattel games. You'll need two to four players to play, first to 1,000 points. Pick up a face-down point card, any card you'd like. Build the corresponding structure and try and knock it down using the birds it tells you to use. Remember, the more points you go for, the harder the structure will be to knock down. Or if you use a freestyle card, use the materials it tells you to use to make a custom structure to knock down with some limitations. Use the slingshot to fire your bird figures at the structure. If you successfully destroy the structure and knock over all the pigs, you get the points displayed on the card. If not, you get nothing. Keep the card if you win. Discard if you don't. The point increments go as followed. 100 points, 200 points, 300 points, freestyle, which can be worth 200 to 300 points, and bonus cards. Bonus cards can be earned if you knock over a certain piece from the structure, yielding you more points, whether it's the golden egg, the golden star, or a hat. This only applies if you've knocked over all the pigs. Keep rotating clockwise until somebody meets the point threshold. 1,000 points. And whoever does is the winner. When Knock on Wood was officially released in May of 2011, a few overall styling improvements were made, and the birds were now made of a rubberized material. The first wave of games included the aforementioned Knock on Wood and another game called On Thin Ice. Knock on Wood matched the theme of poached eggs and the mighty hoax. The game featured the three main birds, a few pigs, and many wooden materials. On Thin Ice, on the other hand, was more on the side of the big setup. It featured smashable ice girders, a TNT block, Terrence, and construction at pigs galore. And another game was on the way. Easter Egg Hunt later changed to the Spring Fling. It appeared to be based on Angry Birds Easter eggs, but would not be released until spring of 2012 for obvious reasons. However, a major complaint about Wave 1 was that the character models looked, well, should I say, terrible. Saying that the birds were inaccurate would be an understatement. They had these little wings on their sides that made them almost look like knockoffs. And the pigs? Oh, the pigs were worse. They were all the same plastic molding with stickered on faces. Improvement was necessary. So as Mattel Games was holding back the Spring Fling for its seasonal release, they also created new bird models with pigs on the way. This forced them to go back and tweak the Spring Fling, and this caused the game to feature a mix of the older style pigs and cards with the updated birds that looked much better than the former. It was a jumble of proportions. They even ended up changing the name again. This time to Spring is in the air. The game ended out a bit off course, but they got the general idea. And it was actually a Target exclusive, and my theory on that is they wanted to hide the fact that it went through development hell. So that does it for part one. As usual, come back next time for part two, where we will go over all the 2012 innovations and releases. Oh, and by the way, part three is the 2013 fiasco. 
So that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Come back next time for another Angry Birds merchandise video. Leave a comment down below saying whatever the heck you want. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.